okay, I went back to the thrift store. And so uh, this is the same one, you know, you know there's uh, lots of thrift stores around us, but I went back to the same one that I had been to in my video a couple of uh, weeks ago now. And uh, I went back because they're having their anniversary sale. And so everything in the store was 50% off. And would you believe this was still there? <laughs> so I went ahead and bought it this time. Uh, there's uh, uh, someone on who follows me and is on some of the pages you guys might know her, Connie. And uh, Connie bought several of these and has been fusing into them. And now I've had uh, jealousy. And so uh, I picked that up. So I'll play with that some other time. That's not the point of this video. Uh, I did want to show you though, this piece that I thought was pretty cool. Obviously it's dirty, uh, but look at that, like kind of a fluted piece. Now, I don't know that I would fill that up and use it as a frit mold. I'm thinking that could be a really cool slumping mold. So um, anyway, you know, for $3.99, half price, $2, uh, that uh, is gonna be something fun to play with and see what kind, of, uh, what kind of fun I can have with that. Now, this is what I really wanted to show you. And so, I have seen uh, commentary and questions online about these before, and when I saw two of them that looked like they had not been used, I had to pounce on them. So it's these, this one's Pampered Chef brand, these stoneware molds. Uh, again, pick this up for $2. So um, they don't, I, don't, I don't know that these, they make these anymore, and there are different manufacturers. But uh, this one, Seasons of the Heart, you got fall, winter, spring, and the summer here, and just kind of neat. Um, what I have seen done is, uh, or what I've heard people do, is that they kiln, either kiln wash these, I'm gonna use Zip. Zip's probably better, because you're going like casting temperature on, on these. So I'm gonna use Zip. Uh, and then fill it with frit, or broken up glass, and cast something in it. So I found two of them. Yeah, see, this one's called Brown Bag Cookie Art Company. I feel like that's the one that I see more often. And so same price, $3.99. Just trying to get this off. So yeah, this mold is from 1984. <laughs> but uh, check that out. Little teddy bear holding a teddy bear. So um, I don't know. I just thought I would tr experiment and see. Uh, be a fearless fuser, as they say. So even if you don't love this pattern, I just decided, uh, why don't I get this and try it? I've seen people talk about it, so let's actually experiment and try it and see what happens. So um, again, neither one of these look like they've been used. This one's got a lot of crud on it, but I don't wanna wash it necessarily because I think then it's gonna pick up water and uh, that would spell disaster. So on something like these stoneware, I've heard about people pre-firing them I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have some other stuff going into the kiln. I think I'm just going to place these in the kiln with nothing on them, just as they are, maybe burn off any impurities and kind of see what they come out like. And if they crack, then uh, no harm, no foul because I didn't lose any glass. So uh, I've got some other stuff going in at probably full fuse temps. I'll just throw these on the shelf next to it and uh, let them burn off. And then I will coat them with zip and we'll see what happens next. Okay, so I pre-fired these. Uh, I put them in with another load that I had going up to 1490 with a 30 minute hold. And um, then I actually had another load going in and it wasn't full, so I just left them in for that one. And that second firing went to 1425 with a 10 minute hold. After the first firing, they looked like this. I didn't notice any difference after the second firing. So really interesting. There's some uh, markings that kind of come to the surface here. Um, it, I don't, it's, it's smooth. I mean, this isn't, um, it's not like it's sticky, although it kind of looks like it might be sticky, like residue or something, but it's not. Um, at least not that I can tell. So, so there's that one. And then this one kind of had the same thing in a couple of spots. It, it um, just looks a little bit different. And, and they are different manufacturers, again, Brown Bag versus Pampered Chef, but they both ended up with these, uh, you know, kind of dark markings in them after the pre-fires. Uh, the, they seem fine, they seem solid. So um, the only thing, there were some, I don't, I would almost call it crumbs or flakes of stoneware kind of scattered about the kiln. Uh, I have a 24 by 24 kiln and some of them seem to have shot fairly far. So it might be the kind of thing where you need to be thinking about something like that, just in case, um, you know, that would have landed in other glass, then that might have uh, ruined that piece. Uh, in this case, that's not what happened. And I don't know what they came from. 
So as I look, I mean, it's almost like it would have splintered off the sides or something, but I can't find any spots where it appears that those came from, but there were a good, I don't know, 10 or 20 uh, little chips. Maybe that's too much, uh, 10 to 15 maybe little chips, but again, I can't see anywhere where they would have come from on here. So that's a little bit of a mystery. So I am going to zip these with boron nitride. I, you could perhaps try kiln wash. Here's my rule of thumb with, I do kiln wash on molds that I'm gonna slump, that are temperatures that are, I don't know, 1300 or lower. Uh, for me personally, on casting molds, whether it's, you know, patty gray mold or the color de Vere molds or, or something from Creative Paradise or other mold manufacturers, generally if they, you know, recommend boron nitride, I, I totally stick with that. So. Uh, I'm going to use zip because I'm taking these up. These are casting molds. I'm going to take them up to a pretty high firing temperature. I just don't know that kiln wash is the best idea. You do you, I'm doing me, and I'm going to use some zip. So I'm going to spray these down, and then I'm going to fill them with some frit and have a little fun with it, um, and uh, then we'll see what they come out with. I don't expect uh, that, that these are going to be super artistic when I fill them. What I'm, I'm just kind of getting it done here so that I can get them in the kiln and see what happens. But I'll, I'll try to be a little careful with what I'm working on. Uh, so stay tuned and let's see what that looks like. Okay, just a few notes about that. You probably saw that I used a variety of materials, uh, including my mask. So always make sure you're safetying up because I used uh, lots of powder there. So just a couple of notes about tools. I've got this little powder sifter that will lay powder down in a fine line. You kind of vibrate it on there. And so I used that for some of the detail. I didn't think I was gonna be as artistic with this as I ended up being. I got kind of caught into the details. I put little pieces of blue frit in his eyes I put some white uh, for uh, around his eyes. I did some French vanilla in his paw pads and around his nose. I did his nose in a little bit of black powder, uh, his vest in red. I did the teddy bear in kind of a darker color. And so you probably saw me kind of layering that up. Then I took a fine sifter and I very lightly sifted black powder across the whole thing, hoping that it would kind of pick up the lines of his fur. And then I filled it in with this fine frit that's tan. So I'm guessing on all of this, I'm totally just eyeballing it. I'll have to, uh, after I turn off the camera here, consider my firing schedule a little bit. I, this may be an epic disaster. I may end up with giant bubbles. Um, I've got plenty of powder that I've been pushing around here for years. And so I don't mind uh, experimenting for you all. So this one's ready to go. I don't even know how much I put in there. I didn't weigh it or anything, uh, but I'll take this over to the kiln and then uh, concentrate on this one. I'm gonna take probably the same approach. Um, powders to kind of fill in the designs here for the seasons. Uh, I haven't decided yet kind of what kind of color I'm going to do the whole heart in. So um, I don't know, we'll figure it out and surprise each other. Okay, so a um, couple notes on this one. If you saw me use this tool, it's, it, I don't use it too often, but it's kind of one of my favorites. It's an earwax vacuum that I bought off of Amazon. And when you turn it on, it sucks just enough to get powder. I had a little yellow that splashed where I didn't want it and that sucked the powder up. And uh, that was a, that's a great little fun tool. Uh, I usually post the colors that I use uh, when I do this, there are way too many. So spare me <laughs> the grief of trying to capture all of these. Just, you saw the colors. They were blues and yellows and reds and greens and browns and clears and whatever. Um, if you're gonna tackle something like this, then uh, use your own creativity and come up with your own colors. I will tell you on this one, I used fine frit again. Uh, for this one, I didn't want anything. I used turquoise in the, um, in the snowflake. And of course I had the yellow in there. I had all kinds of yellow, green, orange, 
uh, red in the leaf. Um, I didn't want to put anything on the back that would be reactive to those colors. So I went with opaline. Uh, I used a fine frit, the opaline striker, and this will get hot enough to strike. So that should give kind of a cool milky white, clearish background, um, or it's gonna look absolutely hideous. We will find out together. Okay, so uh, these are finally cool enough and I've got something to, uh, to show you here. Look, <laughs> I had peeked already, so I knew that happened. Looks like I had a break. It also looks like generally there's not enough glass frankly, in either one of these. So um, let me carry the pieces over to my workbench and we'll see what we got. All right, so let's take a look. I have a feeling that this break has more to do with my firing schedule than anything else. Um, so I, whoops, well, it was zipped well enough. <laughs> um, I fired this uh, at a fairly aggressive ramp up and I even thought as I closed the kiln, mm, that's, that's a rather aggressive... <laughs> Uh, schedule and uh, sure enough it played out that way so I went 400 degrees I probably should have gone you know well to be really conservative more like 200 or even 300 would have been fine but I went 400 and so I'm thinking that has to do with this break um, so let's see here I'm just kind of curious how it looks <laughs> it's kind of ugly it's kind of really ugly <laughs> oh, I'm not sure these would have been my thing anyway. So uh, this amount of glass that fell through, this would have been powder and some frit that fell through. It stuck to the mold because obviously that wasn't kiln washed. And yeah, that part released well. So I had a good a good amount, you know, the, the right amount of kiln wash on there. Um, I'm not sure these things would have been my deal anyway, but it's still kind of interesting to see how it turned out. There's my little bear and uh his, or the, his little teddy bear his vest i don't know i mean <laughs> this looks so weird you know it's not for me necessarily i really wanted to just kind of experiment let's see how this piece came out okay well it comes off the mold so that's a good thing looks like it picked up a fair amount of zip there that came off the mold i don't hate this one um a lot more glass would uh, be better but I don't know it's kind of cute I'm not sure that I love my glass selections here either uh, but no it's not it's not bad the opaline's kind of cool actually so as I'm talking this out loud it's not bad the um, the leaf kind of had the effect I wanted I wanted almost uh, you know this kind of variegated look to the leaf I kind of like that There's still some zip residue in there I did a little pink heart in the middle did my turquoise snowflake, the little uh, daisy, and the sun. These are not, this one's not bad. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be my type of thing in the future, but, you know, it's not bad. So it popped right out. So there you go. Uh, my firing schedule was probably too aggressive. You can see where the zip popped off here, so I would need to respray this to reuse it. Um, I hope you learned something in this. I think my learning is more frit and i only went to 1360 did i say that already 400 up to 1360 so a relatively low uh but i knew that i didn't need much because it was all, all just frit i didn't need to go super high and the higher you go the more likelihood is that it's going to pick up the zip off that mold so i kept it at a lower temperature 1360 wasn't too bad for my kiln um, so next time, if I were to do this again, I'd have to put a lot more glass in there, either in the way of frit or uh, maybe even big pieces of, of glass scrap. I always worry about bubbles. I didn't even do a bubble squeeze on this because it was all frit. But, um, you know, if I did bigger pieces of glass, I'd probably need to do a bubble squeeze. So I hope you learned something. I've seen lots of these posted online. Um, just do a Facebook search if you're in some of the Facebook groups. Do a search for cookie mold uh, within some of the Facebook groups and you'll find lots of these and people sharing kind of what they did and their looks. Uh, some of them can turn out really cool. And if this is your thing, then I uh, hope you learned a little bit something from this video. 
please subscribe to the channel. I got some exciting stuff coming soon, guys, really soon. Like in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to launch something for the holidays that I am super pumped about. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that you have your alerts turned on uh, so that you can be the first to get the news. Catch you later. Bye.